We've looked at the benefits of copper at a healthy level, but now we're talking about excess unbound copper, which is not a good thing. Let's look more closely at what happens. So the implications of copper toxicity. Remember, I talked about the sources first. Birth control, right? The pill, copper IUD. Estrogen retention, we're talking natural estrogens, xenoestrogens, phytoestrogens, the vegetarian plant-based diet, drinking water through copper piping, getting passed down in utero to the fetus, stress, daily stress, sulfate sprayed on our crops, all of these factors, you know, lead to an accumulation of copper in the body. So as copper accumulates, what effect does it have on the mineral system? Well, it depletes zinc and potassium while helping to raise tissue calcium and sodium. It's also inducing stress, which then affects the adrenals, and even though initially copper is stimulating to the body and to the adrenals, over time it's weakening the adrenals. So let's go back now to those first two boxes on the left about magnesium and calcium. So in unit number two, we looked at the effects of excess calcium and low magnesium, and how most people do have that excess calcium, low magnesium imbalance. Well, here is one more reason why people are overcalcified and under magnesiumfied, <laughs> because this excess copper is contributing to this imbalance. So calcium magnesium, you'll recall, is known as the blood sugar ratio. And the higher this ratio, the more prone one becomes to low blood sugar. And then the body increases secretion of adrenaline in an attempt to correct the hypoglycemia, but that increased adrenaline then leads to states of anxiety and panic. Adrenaline is an anxiety and panic hormone. And these reactions are especially amplified when copper eliminates into the blood, such as what happens during a, the detox of copper, the mobilization of copper. And this is why when someone goes into a copper detox uninformed and that adrenaline is increasing suddenly, you know, anxiety and panic are very common reactions. We also learned earlier in this course about the calcium to potassium ratio, the thyroid ratio. The higher the tissue calcium, right, blocking cell permeability to thyroid hormone, and the lower the, the cellular potassium, decreasing sensitization of thyroxin to the mitochondria, this is leading to a slowing of the thyroid or hypothyroid, or at least the effects of hypothyroid. Now if we look at sodium and potassium, right, potassium is going down, sodium is going up. That high Na to K, sodium to potassium stress ratio, the higher that ratio, the higher the stress reaction of the individual. That too leads to increased levels of panic, a loss of control, and the need to numb emotions. And so if this stress goes unchecked and calcium goes high enough, this leads to what's called a calcium shell. So the calcium shell is like the body's ultimate defense against overwhelming stress. And the calcium shell further leads to numbing the emotions and blocking awareness of what's really happening just because it's protecting the body against this overwhelming stress, whether it's externally caused or even internally caused. Now the drop in zinc, the low zinc, zinc deficiency is also closely linked to depression. So as zinc gets lower and lower, that's also going to lead to increased levels of depression. And just the low energy itself, as the adrenals weaken further in time, you know, low energy is a state of depression by very definition. Low energy, you know, depression. Along with symptoms like anxiety and ADD and bipolar symptoms can also appear. Now, let's talk about the adrenals. So copper is an excitotoxin. It's stimulating to the body and to the brain. But as the body is stimulated and you're taking on a lot of tasks and projects, all of this is wearing down or it's a, you know, it's a stress on the adrenals, which eventually weakens the adrenals. And that in time, again, if left unchecked, can lead to, well, fatigue, first of all, but later in time to full-blown burnout. Copper also destroys vitamin C on contact, and vitamin C is fuel for the adrenals. And then as the adrenals weaken further, that allows copper to rise even more. In fact, weak adrenal activity is perhaps the greatest single internal cause 
for copper toxicity. Now we're going to talk about a very, very important protein here called ceruloplasmin. Ceruloplasmin is produced by the liver and it's needed to bind to copper to make copper bioavailable. What happens is as the body is stimulated, ceruloplasmin production is probably going to be okay. But after you pass burnout, or once the body is exhausted, then that low adrenal activity impairs the liver's ability to produce adequate ceruloplasmin. So ceruloplasmin levels then drop low. And without enough ceruloplasmin, then that allows copper to further accumulate. Not only that, it also allows iron to accumulate as well because ceruloplasmin is also needed to enhance iron absorption. Let's look at our ceruloplasmin levels before we just, you know, write off someone as anemic. So again, as copper accumulates, biounavailable copper accumulates, it's building up in our liver, and then as the liver gets overloaded, then secondary storage sites, it goes to the brain and other organs. As copper accumulates in the brain, and as magnesium drops, you know, anxiety, magnesium deficiency is linked to anxiety, and the weak adrenals with depression, and the calcium shell with the numbing of emotions. So all of these contribute to then the emotional changes that will appear in time, the anxiety, that increased, the increased depression, emotional numbness, apathy, increased irritability, and even at advanced stages, states of paranoia and schizophrenia. And this is also amplified by the neurotransmitter imbalances that excess copper produces. Now I didn't include it on this chart, but another thing to mention here is the link to candida. So copper is essential for the control of all types of fungi and pathogenic bacteria. And one of copper's roles in this regard is controlling candida. But here we understand that when copper becomes in excess and ceruloplasmin levels then drop low as a result and copper becomes biounavailable, copper is then unable to do its job and candida will be more naturally able to flourish. So remember I said that copper has an excitotoxicity effect in the brain. It's overstimulating the brain cells. And this leads up to kind of a speeding up of thoughts and taking on more projects. And this becomes especially more pronounced when magnesium is low.